In this video, we will delve into the intricate anatomy of the thyroid gland, a vital organ in the human endocrine system. We will start with an introduction to the thyroid gland, providing an overview of its significance in the human endocrine system. Following that, we will delve into the descriptive anatomy of the thyroid gland. Next, we will explore the anatomical relations the thyroid gland establishes with adjacent structures. We will then proceed to describe the gland's blood and nerve supply. Before summarizing, we will address some crucial clinical correlations. The thyroid gland, positioned at the forefront of the neck, serves as a critical component of the endocrine system. This singular, midline organ is intricately involved in producing and disseminating two key hormones, thyroxine known as T4 and triodothyronine known as T3. The influence of T4 and T3 extends across various bodily functions, impacting how energy is utilized and regulated. By modulating oxygen usage and heat production, the thyroid hormones are integral in maintaining a stable and efficient metabolic state, which is crucial for the proper functioning of nearly all body systems. This intricate hormonal control ensures the body's harmonious operation, impacting growth, development, and numerous metabolic processes. The thyroid gland, nestled in the visceral compartment of the neck, occupies a strategic anatomical position amidst vital structures such as the trachea, esophagus, and pharynx, all encased within the confines of the pretracheal fascia. This gland is prominently located just below the larynx, anterior to the trachea, and it assumes an anterior lateral stance relative to both the larynx and trachea. Its vertical span extends from the fifth cervical vertebra, C5, to the first thoracic vertebra, T1 positioning it in close proximity to the thyroid and cricoid cartilages of the larynx. This strategic placement allows the thyroid gland to effectively influence respiratory and vocal functions through its hormonal output. Furthermore, the gland is situated posterior to the sternothyroid and sternohyoid muscles, which are integral components of the neck's muscular anatomy. This posterior alignment with the neck muscles ensures a protected yet accessible location for the thyroid gland, allowing it to perform its critical endocrine functions without interference, while also being susceptible to influences from neighboring structures in the neck. Concerning the thyroid gland's distinctive architecture, it resembles a concave ring that curves backward, contributing to its unique and recognizable shape. This structure primarily comprises two lateral lobes, aptly named the right and left lobes, which embody the bulk of the gland's mass. These lobes extend laterally across the neck, aligning closely with the trachea's anatomical course. Connecting these two significant lobes is a relatively thin, yet crucial, component known as the median isthmus. This isthmus elegantly stretches across the front of the trachea, seamlessly uniting the right and left lobes. Its positioning over the trachea is not just a matter of spatial convenience but also plays a vital role in the gland's functionality, providing a symmetrical and balanced distribution of the thyroid tissue around the trachea. When viewed from the front, the thyroid gland's configuration strikingly resembles the shape of a butterfly or a capital H. This visual metaphor aptly captures the gland's bilateral symmetry and its central connecting isthmus. The thyroid gland's lobes, each conical in shape, present a distinct three-dimensional anatomy with three primary surfaces, an anterior lateral, a medial, and a posterior surface. The anterior lateral surface faces outward towards the lateral aspects of the neck, interacting with surrounding muscles and tissues. The medial surface, in contrast, faces inward towards the trachea and esophagus, playing a crucial role in the gland's relationship with these vital structures. The posterior surface, meanwhile, aligns with the underlying anatomical features, such as the cervical vertebrae and associated muscles. Each lobe reaches upward with an apex, also known as the superior pole, directed upwards and slightly laterally. This orientation allows the lobes to align with the neck's natural curvature and the adjacent structures. The base, or the inferior pole, is found at the level of the fourth or fifth tracheal ring, anchoring the lobes securely within the neck. The isthmus, a vital link between the lobes, is shaped like a flat blade and exhibits two surfaces, an anterior and a posterior surface. These surfaces provide a broad attachment area over the trachea. Additionally, the isthmus has two distinct edges, the inferior and the superior. This structure's flat, blade-like shape enables it to bridge the lobes efficiently while maintaining a low profile against the trachea. Approximately 50% of individuals possess a pyramidal lobe, an extension that projects superiorly from the isthmus. 
This lobe varies in size and shape, but typically follows the midline of the neck. Its presence underscores the variability and complexity of the thyroid gland's anatomy. The thyroid gland, known for its vital endocrine functions, also possesses distinct physical characteristics. Its surface is smooth, reflecting its glandular nature. This smoothness is integral to its function, allowing for uniform secretion and distribution of thyroid hormones. The gland's coloration is a pinkish-brown, hue that is indicative of its rich blood supply and active hormonal synthesis. This coloration can vary slightly, influenced by factors such as age, health, and hormonal activity. Encasing the thyroid gland is a thin fibrous capsule. This capsule is not just a protective layer, it plays a crucial role in defining the gland's shape and maintaining its structural integrity. The capsule also facilitates the segregation of the glandular tissue from surrounding neck structures, ensuring efficient hormonal synthesis and secretion. The dimensions of the thyroid gland are precise, reflecting its optimized design for endocrine function. Each lateral lobe measures approximately 6 cm in height and 2.5 to 3 cm in width. These dimensions allow the lobes to efficiently produce and release thyroid hormones. The isthmus is relatively smaller, measuring about 1 to 2 cm in height and about 1 cm in width, with a thickness of around 1.5 cm. This size enables it to effectively bridge the lobes without being obtrusive. On average, the thyroid gland weighs between 25 and 30 grams. This weight can fluctuate based on various physiological factors, including age, body weight, and hormonal balance. Despite its relatively small size and weight, the thyroid's impact on the body's metabolic processes is immense, underscoring the significance of its well-defined structure and dimensions in maintaining overall health and homeostasis. Delving into the anatomical relationships of the thyroid gland, we will begin by examining its deep relations. The isthmus of the thyroid gland, a slender strip of thyroid tissue, establishes several critical anatomical relationships that are essential for its physiological roles. Anteriorly, it lies against the sternothyroid muscle. This relationship is important for the isthmus protection and integration into the functional movements of the neck. Posteriorly, the isthmus is intimately associated with the second, third, and fourth tracheal cartilages. These cartilages provide a stable scaffold upon which the isthmus rests, and their proximity is indicative of the potential influence the thyroid may have on the trachea, such as in cases of significant thyroid enlargement which can lead to compression. The superior edge of the isthmus often gives rise to the pyramidal lobe, a variable extension of thyroid tissue. When present, the pyramidal lobe extends upward from the isthmus, potentially as far as the hyoid bone. Lastly, the inferior edge of the isthmus is associated with the plexus thyroidius impar, a network of veins that lies on the thyroid gland and is responsible for venous drainage. This plexus is a part of the intricate vascular network that supplies and drains blood from the thyroid. These deep relationships of the isthmus with surrounding structures demonstrate the thyroid's integration into the vascular, muscular, and cartilaginous frameworks of the neck, underlining its vulnerability to changes in these areas due to its central location. The lateral lobes of the thyroid gland maintain intricate deep anatomical relationships with several key structures in the neck, particularly on their posterior surface. Enclosed within the protective carotid sheath, which runs adjacent to the thyroid lobes, are three essential components of the cervical anatomy, the common carotid artery, the internal jugular vein, and the vagus nerve. The common carotid artery is a major arterial blood supply to the head and neck, and its pulsations can often be appreciated near the posterior border of the thyroid lobes. Alongside the common carotid artery within the carotid sheath lies the internal jugular vein, which is responsible for venous drainage from the head and brain. The vagus nerve, the tenth cranial nerve, also traverses within this sheath. The close association of the vagus nerve with the thyroid gland underscores the potential for neurological implications during thyroid surgery or pathological enlargement of the gland. Additionally, the parathyroid glands are situated posteriorly to the thyroid lobes. These glands' intimate relationship with the thyroid is of paramount importance during thyroid surgery, as their preservation is essential to maintain calcium balance. The medial surface of the thyroid gland's lateral lobes is engaged in a complex array of relationships with key anatomical structures of the neck. Positioned against the lateral surface of the trachea, 
extending from the first to the fifth tracheal ring, the medial surfaces of the lateral lobes are intimately associated with the tracheus framework. This close proximity allows the thyroid gland to potentially influence the tracheus patency, with thyroid enlargement sometimes leading to tracheal compression. Above the trachea, the lateral lobes also relate medially to the lateral surface of the cricoid cartilage. The cricoid cartilage, being the only complete ring of the laryngeal framework, provides a stable landmark adjacent to the thyroid lobes. Furthermore, the thyroid lobes extend upwards to the inferior part of the thyroid cartilage, which is integral to the structure of the larynx and vocal mechanism. In addition to these cartilaginous relationships, two critical nerves are closely associated with the medial surface of the lateral lobes, the external laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Given their proximity, these nerves are at risk during thyroidectomy and other surgical procedures involving the thyroid gland. The anterolateral surfaces of the thyroid gland's lateral lobes are intricately associated with several muscular structures that contribute to the complex anatomy of the neck. The sternothyroid muscle, a strap-like muscle that extends from the sternum to the thyroid cartilage, lies directly on the anterolateral surface of each lobe. Due to its placement, the sternothyroid muscle acts as a shielding layer, providing an additional level of protection to the thyroid gland. Adjacent to the sternothyroid is the sternohyoid muscle, which runs parallel and superficial to it. The sternohyoid muscle extends from the sternum and clavicle to the hyoid bone. This muscle overlays the thyroid gland, and its contraction can affect the gland's position and potentially influence its palpability during physical examination. Completing the trio is the superior belly of the omohyoid muscle. The omohyoid muscle is divided into two bellies by an intermediate tendon, with the superior belly extending from this tendon to the hyoid bone. The proximity of the superior belly of the omohyoid to the anterolateral surface of the thyroid lobe signifies its contribution to the dynamic nature of the neck's musculature. The thyroid gland's lateral lobes establish a network of deep anatomical relationships at their poles, integrating vascular and neural components vital for the gland's function and the neck's overall physiology. At the inferior pole, the lateral lobes are closely aligned with the inferior thyroid veins, which emerge to drain blood from the lobes into the brachiocephalic veins. Additionally, the inferior pole is anatomically related to the fifth and sixth tracheal rings, anchoring the gland in a stable position conducive to its function and to the structural integrity of the trachea. Ascending to the superior pole of the lateral lobes, the branches of the superior thyroid artery are found. Accompanying the arterial supply, the superior thyroid veins provide venous drainage at the superior aspect, facilitating the return of blood to the heart. In the vicinity of the superior pole, the recurrent laryngeal nerve courses upward, in close proximity to the thyroid gland. This nerve relationship with the thyroid lobes is of paramount importance during surgical interventions to avoid nerve damage and preserve voice quality. Also associated with the superior pole is the inferior laryngeal artery, a branch of the superior thyroid artery. Although its name suggests a lower position, it is related to the superior pole as it supplies the larynx, emphasizing the close relationship between the thyroid and the laryngeal blood supply. Now, while discussing the superficial relationships of the thyroid gland, we will highlight the layered complexity of the neck structure. Each layer serves a distinct purpose, both in protecting the gland and facilitating its function within the cervical environment. Commencing at the very surface, the skin acts as the first protective barrier, shielding deeper structures from external elements. Beneath the skin lies the superficial fascia, a layer of connective tissue that houses the platysma muscle. This thin, sheet-like muscle is responsible for subtle expressions and movements of the skin over the neck, such as tension during grimacing. Delving deeper, the subcutaneous tissue provides a layer of insulation and padding. This layer also contains the cutaneous nerves, blood vessels, and lymphatics that serve the skin and platysma muscle, further encapsulating the thyroid gland within a network of vital structures. Encasing the subcutaneous tissue is the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. This robust layer envelops the neck, segregating the various compartments and providing structural support. It is an important landmark in surgical procedures, as it must be traversed to reach the thyroid gland. Beneath the investing layer is the pretracheal cervical fascia, which is thinner and more elastic. This layer allows for the movement of the trachea during swallowing and respiration. 
It also contributes to the formation of the visceral compartment of the neck, which houses the thyroid gland. Finally, directly surrounding the thyroid gland is the perithyroid visceral sheath, which is a continuation of the pretracheal fascia that forms a capsule-like structure around the gland. This sheath not only provides a distinct anatomical boundary for the thyroid gland, but also integrates it into the neck's infrastructure by anchoring it to the surrounding tissues. This progression from the surface to the depth delineates a cascade of protective and functional layers, each integral to the overall integrity and operation of the cervical region and the thyroid gland within it. The arterial supply to the thyroid gland is robust and ensures the organ receives a plentiful and reliable flow of oxygenated blood, essential for its endocrine functions. The gland is primarily vascularized by four main arteries, two superior thyroid arteries and two inferior thyroid arteries. The superior thyroid arteries are typically the first branches of the external carotid arteries. They descend to the gland, supplying the upper poles and much of the anterior surfaces of the lobes with blood. These arteries are significant not only for their supply but also because they are accompanied by the external laryngeal nerves, and their course is a landmark in neck surgeries. The inferior thyroid arteries originate from the thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of the subclavian artery. These arteries take a more circuitous route to reach the thyroid gland from below, providing blood to the lower poles and much of the posterior surfaces of the lobes. Their relationship with the recurrent laryngeal nerves is of clinical importance, as these nerves lie in close proximity as they ascend into the larynx. In some individuals, an additional artery known as the thyroid ima artery is present. This vessel is an inconstant and somewhat rare anatomical variant that arises directly from the brachiocephalic trunk or less commonly from the aorta itself. When present, the thyroid ima artery ascends on the anterior surface of the trachea to supply the isthmus and adjacent regions of the thyroid gland. The rich vascular supply from these arteries is crucial for the thyroid gland synthesis of hormones, as the glandular tissue requires a high volume of blood flow to meet its metabolic demands. The superior thyroid artery plays a pivotal role in the vascularization of the thyroid gland, ensuring a steady and adequate blood supply to the gland's superior poles and adjacent structures. This artery has a distinct origin, course, and branching pattern. Originating from the external carotid artery, the superior thyroid artery is one of its earliest and most anterior branches. After its origin, the artery takes a deliberate course inferiorly toward the neck, targeting the superior poles of the thyroid gland. As it approaches the thyroid gland, the superior thyroid artery traverses the neck's anatomical layers, piercing the pretracheal layer of deep cervical fascia. This action is of particular importance as it transitions from a relatively protected course to a more vulnerable one, where it becomes more superficial and accessible to the gland. Upon reaching the superior pole of the thyroid gland, the superior thyroid artery demonstrates its functional versatility by dividing into three primary branches, an internal branch, a posterior branch, and an external branch. Each of these branches has a specific distribution and purpose, the internal branch primarily supplies the glandular tissue of the thyroid itself. The posterior branch extends to supply the posterior aspects of the gland as well as potentially contributing to the parathyroid glands, which lie posteriorly to the thyroid gland. The external branch runs superficially, often supplying the anterior muscles of the neck and the skin, thereby integrating the thyroid gland's blood supply with that of the overlying tissues. This branching pattern allows for a comprehensive delivery of blood to both the thyroid gland and the adjacent structures of the neck, reflecting the superior thyroid artery's importance in the intricate vascular network of the cervical region. The inferior thyroid artery is integral to the blood supply of the thyroid gland, particularly its posterior aspect, and has a distinct origin and course within the neck. The artery takes its roots from the thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of the subclavian artery. This origin point situates it as part of the rich vascular network that services the structures of the lower neck and upper thorax. From its origin, the inferior thyroid artery embarks on a superomedial trajectory. Its path is characterized by a passage posterior to the carotid sheaths, which contain the vital common carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and vagus nerve. This route behind the carotid sheath allows the inferior thyroid artery to approach the thyroid gland from a posterior angle, which is essential for supplying the posterior portions of the gland that are less accessible to the superior thyroid artery. 
Upon reaching the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland, the inferior thyroid artery further subdivides into several branches, ensuring a comprehensive distribution of blood across the gland. Notably, it divides into an inferior branch, which descends to supply the lower parts of the thyroid lobes and may contribute to the vascularization of the adjacent trachea and esophagus. An internal branch, which penetrates deep into the glandular substance, delivering blood to the parenchyma. A posterior branch, which supplies the dorsal surface of the gland and potentially the parathyroid glands. Its position and relationship with other cervical structures highlight the importance of careful consideration of this artery during surgical procedures in the neck to prevent inadvertent injury. The venous drainage of the thyroid gland is an essential component of its circulatory network, effectively removing deoxygenated blood and metabolic waste from the gland. This drainage system is characterized by a trio of veins, the superior, middle, and inferior thyroid veins, which collectively form a venous plexus that envelops the gland, ensuring thorough venous return. The superior thyroid vein emerges from the upper pole of the gland, typically accompanying the superior thyroid artery but following its own path towards its drainage destination. It efficiently collects blood from the anterior aspect of the gland and directs it into the internal jugular vein. Similarly, the middle thyroid vein assists in the venous drainage of the gland. It originates from the lateral surface of the thyroid lobe and, though it is not associated with a corresponding artery, it finds its path to also drain into the internal jugular vein. Lastly, the inferior thyroid vein represents the primary drainage route for the lower aspects of the gland. Unlike its superior and middle counterparts, it does not directly join the internal jugular vein. Instead, it forms a venous plexus that converges into a common trunk that drains into the subclavian or brachiocephalic vein. Together, these veins form an intricate and redundant venous network around the thyroid gland, guaranteeing that blood is efficiently drained. The lymphatic drainage of the thyroid gland is a sophisticated and multidirectional network, crucial for maintaining the gland's health and functioning by efficiently removing lymph. This drainage system commences with the periglandular nodes, which are situated in close proximity to the gland itself. These nodes act as the first line of lymphatic filtration, capturing lymph directly from the thyroid tissue. This immediate drainage is essential for the rapid removal of waste and for immune surveillance of the glandular tissue, providing a defense mechanism against potential pathologies. Following this initial drainage, the lymphatic flow progresses to a series of strategically placed lymph nodes, the prelaryngeal, pretracheal, and paratracheal nodes. These nodes are located along the path of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, a crucial anatomical landmark in the neck. The prelaryngeal nodes, also known as delphian nodes, are positioned just above the thyroid gland, near the cricothyroid ligament. They are key in draining the upper portions of the thyroid. The pretracheal nodes lie in front of the trachea and are instrumental in draining the central parts of the thyroid gland. The paratracheal nodes, situated alongside the trachea, are lined with the course of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. They play a significant role in draining the lateral and posterior aspects of the thyroid. This progression of lymphatic drainage follows a logical path, mirroring the blood supply and nerve innervation of the gland. The comprehensive nature of this drainage system underscores its importance in not only removing waste but also in facilitating immune responses against infections or malignancies within the thyroid gland. The intricate lymphatic network surrounding the thyroid also indicates the potential pathways for the spread of thyroid diseases, such as cancer, underscoring the importance of these nodes in clinical diagnoses and treatment planning. The nerve supply of the thyroid gland is a composite of both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers, integrating the gland into the body's broader autonomic nervous system. This dual innovation plays a role in modulating the gland's blood flow and potentially influencing its hormonal activity. The sympathetic nerve supply to the thyroid is derived from the cervical ganglia, specifically, the superior, middle, and inferior cervical ganglia. These sympathetic fibers are part of the wider sympathetic chain that runs along the vertebral column. They contribute to the regulation of blood flow within the gland by controlling the dilation and constriction of blood vessels. This regulation is crucial for maintaining an optimal environment for the gland's hormonal production and secretion. In addition to the sympathetic input, the thyroid gland receives parasympathetic fibers from two significant nerves, the superior laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. 
Both nerves are branches of the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, which is a key component of the parasympathetic nervous system. These nerves are primarily involved in the innervation of the larynx, but their parasympathetic fibers may also influence the thyroid gland, although their exact role in thyroid function is less defined compared to the sympathetic fibers. Beyond the direct neural inputs, the primary regulation of the thyroid gland's hormonal production and secretion is an endocrine control mechanism involving the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH. The hypothalamus releases thyrotropin-releasing hormone, TRH, which stimulates the pituitary gland to secrete thyroid-stimulating hormone TSH, which then acts directly on the thyroid gland, prompting it to produce and release thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. This hypothalamic-pituitary-thyroid axis is fundamental to maintaining the body's metabolic rate, growth, and development and is a key aspect of endocrine system homeostasis. Thus, the thyroid gland's nerve supply, encompassing both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers, complements the hormonal regulatory mechanisms governed by the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, illustrating the interconnected nature of the nervous and endocrine systems in maintaining physiological balance. Applied anatomy in the context of the thyroid gland reveals critical insights, particularly when considering conditions like goiter and the practicalities of thyroid palpation. Goiter is a condition marked by a notable enlargement and swelling of the thyroid gland. This enlargement can vary from a slight increase in size to a massive swelling, visibly altering the neck's contour. Goiters may develop due to a variety of reasons, including iodine deficiency, autoimmune diseases, or thyroid nodules. Their size and impact on surrounding structures are a primary concern in their management and treatment. A specific type of goiter, known as a plunging goiter, is characterized by a significant increase in the gland's volume. This type of goiter can extend beyond the confines of the typical anatomical boundaries of the thyroid, sometimes descending into the thoracic inlet. The most concerning aspect of a plunging goiter is its potential to compress the trachea, leading to progressive dyspnea, difficulty breathing. This compression can cause respiratory distress and necessitates careful medical intervention. In clinical practice, palpation of the thyroid gland is a fundamental technique used for assessing its size, texture, and the presence of nodules. The standard method involves the clinician standing behind the patient. From this position, the clinician can effectively use both hands to palpate the neck. The patient is typically asked to swallow during the examination, as this action causes the thyroid gland to move up and down, making it easier to feel. This technique allows the clinician to assess the gland symmetry, any enlargement or irregularities, and to detect the presence of nodules or other abnormalities. Another important clinical correlation to note is thyroid nodules, which are small, abnormal masses or lumps within the thyroid gland. Although these nodules are exceedingly common, their clinical significance lies in their potential to be either benign or, albeit rarely, malignant. The location of thyroid nodules in relation to critical structures like the recurrent laryngeal nerves is a key concern. These nerves, which run close to the thyroid gland, are responsible for controlling the vocal cords. If a nodule exerts pressure on or invades these nerves, it can lead to recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis. Such a condition often manifests as dysphonia, a change in voice quality, including hoarseness or loss of voice. In the context of a thyroid tumor, the presence of dysphonia or immobility of a vocal cord is a significant finding. It raises a suspicion of malignancy, warranting thorough investigation and management. This relationship underscores the importance of a reflex consideration in medical practice. Any thyroid tumor accompanied by dysphonia or vocal cord immobility is treated as potentially malignant until proven otherwise. Consequently, it is advisable to conduct an indirect laryngoscopic examination in cases of thyroid tumors. This examination allows for the assessment of larynx mobility and the state of the vocal cords, providing valuable information about the extent of the nodule's impact. Moreover, malignant tumors of the thyroid gland pose a further risk due to their potential for aggressive invasion. Such tumors can infiltrate beyond the thyroid capsule, affecting nearby structures like the cervical trachea and even the cervical esophagus. This invasion can lead to complications such as breathing difficulties, swallowing problems, and further changes in voice quality. Understanding the applied anatomy of the thyroid gland is crucial in the diagnosis and management of thyroid disorders. 
the location, size, and relationship of the thyroid gland to surrounding structures like the recurrent laryngeal nerves, trachea, and esophagus plays a pivotal role in the clinical approach to thyroid nodules. Understanding these relationships is essential for accurate diagnosis, risk assessment, and the formulation of an effective treatment plan for thyroid nodules, whether benign or malignant. To conclude, the thyroid gland, a key player in the endocrine system, primarily focuses on the production and release of thyroid hormones, which are vital for a wide array of physiological processes in the body. These hormones, primarily thyroxine, T4, and triodothyronin, T3, play an instrumental role in regulating the body's metabolism. They influence how the body uses energy, impacting various functions like temperature regulation, heart rate, and weight management. Furthermore, thyroid hormones are crucial in growth and development, especially in the brain and nervous system during infancy and childhood. However, the thyroid gland is susceptible to a range of conditions that can disrupt its normal functioning. These include hyperthyroidism, overactive thyroid, hyperthyroidism, underactive thyroid, thyroid nodules, and thyroid cancer. Each of these conditions presents unique challenges and symptoms, necessitating careful clinical examination and diagnosis. The gland's accessible location in the neck makes it amenable to physical examination, where palpation can reveal enlargements, nodules, or other irregularities. Surgical intervention in thyroid conditions, such as thyroidectomy, is considered a delicate and intricate procedure due to the gland's proximity to several vital structures. Notably, the risk of damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerves during surgery is a significant concern. These nerves are crucial for voice and breathing functions, and their injury can lead to vocal cord paralysis, resulting in hoarseness, voice loss, or breathing difficulties. Additionally, the parathyroid glands, which are small glands located behind the thyroid and responsible for calcium regulation in the body, can be inadvertently affected during thyroid surgery. This can lead to permanent hypoparathyroidism, a condition characterized by low levels of calcium in the blood, leading to muscle cramps, spasms, and neurological issues. Therefore, the thyroid gland's role in the body is not only central to metabolic regulation and development but also presents specific challenges in terms of medical management and surgical treatment. The risks associated with thyroid surgery highlight the need for skilled surgical technique and thorough knowledge of the gland's anatomy and its surrounding structures.